All right, so in this video, we're going to be talking about the two kinds of speed that we come across in physics, average speed and instantaneous speed. Um, so we're going to start off by um, for recapping what a scalar quantity is, because average speed and instantaneous speed are both scalar quantities, and also thinking about what we think speed currently means and what we think the word instantaneous means. So um, pause this video now, grab yourself a piece of rough paper and write down what you think in response to each of those three questions. Okay, so let's have a look. So um, scalar quantities we've met before. So we have a very precise definition for. So um, they are um, quantities that can be described using one number, uh, and that is called a magnitude of them. So we've met quite a few of them. So we've met distance, time, um, and maybe we've met energy, mass. There, there, are a lot, there are lots of scalar quantities you've typically met at this point. There, and so you can see that's where the one and the m are there for, because you describe using one number, and that number is called the magnitude. So let's talk about speed and instantaneous. So this is where physics runs into problems, because we start using language that's used in everyday life, and unfortunately that can lead to some confusion. So let's take a look at um, typically what we find if we look at what speed is. Um, so things like rate of motion, uh, act how swiftness or swiftly something is moving, things along those lines. Um, and instantaneous, likewise, so we have acting without any perceptible duration of time um, or done without delay, something along those lines. So they, they're not, they don't give you um, a bad idea about what we mean in, in physics, but I think it's important we start by being specific about what we mean by average speed and instantaneous speed. So let's do that now. So first of all, let's start off with average speed, as that is the simplest of the two. Um, so I will give this the symbol S with a subscript AV to indicate its average speed. Um, we have to be a bit careful because we also use the symbol S for displacement, um, which can get a bit confusing, but um, which is why I'm adding the average here. It, it helps distinguish it. So anyway, it's the distance an object has traveled divided by the time it took to travel that distance. And so you'll notice this is in purple, so we should add this to our notes that we're making here. I think this is an important thing for us to write down. So um, pause the video now and get that down. All right, so now you had a chance to do that. So this is most commonly expressed in the form of this equation here, because we're doing a distance divided by time. Um, so because we are doing a distance, which measure, which we've measured in meters, uh, divided by a time, that means that average speed will be measured in meters per second because we're doing distance divided by time. So average speed can't tell us how fast an object was going at a particular moment in time, but it tells you over a period of time pretty much roughly what the speed is. So um, to draw an everyday example of this, so let's say you're in a car going along a motorway and you are obeying the speed limit, which most people don't seem to, um, that would mean you had an instant, what we call an instantaneous speed of about 70 miles an hour. But over a journey, it's very unlikely that you had an average speed of 70 miles an hour because you'll run into traffic, you'll be changing roads, all those kind of things. So your average speed is almost certainly going to be lower than 70 miles an hour, even if at any moment in time you were going at 70 miles an hour. So that's our average speed. So instantaneous speed, which is often abbreviated to just speed. So if you see speed written, it's implying instantaneous speed. So that is uh, I'm going to give it the symbol S. Um, I guess I could give it a subscript I, but it doesn't tend to have that, so I'm not going to do that. Um, and it's the rate of change of distance. So um, just a general point here. So if you see the word rate in physics, what the way I think about that is it's telling us about the gradient of a graph with time on the x-axis. So if you see the word rate, think graph with time on the x-axis. So 
In terms of what graph, what's on the y-axis, so to work out instantaneous speed, it's the gradient of a distance versus time graph. So you can see we've got distance on our y-axis. So we've had a look at gradients in a previous video. So if you haven't um, taken a look at that, it's earlier on in the um, Forces of Motion playlist. So I've done a whole video about gradients. Um, so it might be worth checking that out. But so let's say we've got these three distance versus time graphs. You can see on this one, the gradient is increasing. It's over time because it's getting steeper. So that's showing speed is increasing. And when I say speed here, I'm talking about instantaneous speed. Um, here on the red, we've got the gradient is the same the whole time. So we've got constant instantaneous speed. And here the gradient is decreasing. It's getting less steep. So we've got decreasing speed there. So these were maybe like three kind of typical graphs. We can get them uh, having all kinds of curves and stuff, but that those three are a good starting point for instantaneous speed. Okay, so let's actually look at how we calculate instantaneous speed, because calculating average speed is easy. We have a nice simple equation for that. We do distance divided by time. So instantaneous speed we are going to have to work out or calculate the gradient of a graph. So we'll start off with the, a simpler graph where it's a straight line, where finding the gradient is straightforward. So let's say we've got this graph, it goes through zero, zero, and it goes through the point four, nine. So if we want to find the gradient, which is going to be the instantaneous speed, we'll do change in Y over change in X, which change in Y is, the furthest to the right is this coordinate here. So we're going to do 9 minus 0. And we're going to do 4 minus 0 on the bottom line, giving us an um, giving us a instantaneous speed of, uh, it's actually 2.25, but that's a silly number of significant figures to give it big because we've only used one sig fig number. So I'm going to give that as 2.3 meters per second. So since the instantaneous speed is constant, because this is a straight line graph, that means at any point on this line, the instantaneous speed is 2.3 meters per second. So this is a particular instance where the instantaneous speed and the average speed will be the same value, because if I calculated the average speed, I would do the distance it's traveled, nine meters divided by the time taken for saying and you can see we'd get 2.3 as well so if your distance versus time graph is a straight line instantaneous speed and average speed will be exactly the same thing so let's have a look at an example where they're not the same thing and why it's important we distinguish between the two and that comes up on a non-linear graph or a graph that's not a straight line is that's a fancy way of saying so let's say we've got a graph that looks like this. So our gradient is actually decreasing over time. So this means the speed, the instantaneous speed that is, is getting smaller over time. So what we're going to do is calculate the, the average speed, and the instantaneous speed at five, the time of five seconds here. So we can see we've got, for time is five seconds, it's traveled 22 meters. So to get the average speed, that's nice and easy. We'll just take the distance, we'll divide it by the time, and we get 4.4 meters per second. So over, so between zero and five seconds, it's had an average speed of 4.4 meters per second. So if we want to find the instantaneous speed at five seconds, we have to draw a tangent to the graph at five seconds, which is what this black dashed line is here. Um, so again, I mentioned these in some of my previous videos. So this is what we call a tangent. So I've marked a point on the tangent here. So I've just picked completely random numbers to do this. Um, but obviously when you're taking measurements, this would have an actual value. So let's say we've got this point 8.32. So when the time is eight seconds, it's traveled 32 meters is kind of what this is indicating. So if we want to get the instantaneous speed, we'll need the gradient of the tangent. So we're going to do change in y divided by change in x. So our y is going to be 32 uh, minus 22, because 32 is most to the right. Our change in x is going to be 8 minus 5, gives you 10 over 3, gives you 3.3 meters per second. That's the instantaneous speed at 5 seconds. So um, the question at this point, does it make sense 
that instantaneous speed here is smaller than the average speed. Um, so you might want to pause the video and have a think, maybe write something down on your rough piece of paper. Does it make sense? The instantaneous speed is smaller than the, the average speed. All right, so um, I'm going to assume you've had a crack at that. So um, in terms of this, the answer is yes, but that doesn't really um, help. It does. So the um, graph shows that uh, instantaneous and Instantaneous speed. So you can see why we abbreviate this as speed most commonly, because that's a fat, right? So is uh, decreasing over time. So it makes sense. That's the, the final instantaneous speed is less than the average speed. Because essentially on this graph, the biggest speed it was traveling at is actually at time equals zero, because that's when it was steepest. And over time, the speed is getting smaller and smaller um, there. So we'd expect to get our instantaneous speed being lower than our average speed. That does make sense. OK, um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to pose you some questions to have a go at by yourself to see if you've picked up um, the key things from this video. So pause the video now and on your piece of paper or whatever you're working on, have a go at answering each of these questions and then um, I will go through them so we can see if you've um, got those correct. All right, so let's um, review that now you've had a chance to have a go at yourself. So you want some similarities and differences between average speed and instantaneous speed. So let's start off with similarities. Um, oh, helps when you can spell. Similarities, uh, they are both scalar quantities and both measured in meters per second. Here we have, uh, I think I'm gonna to want to create myself a bit more space, so let's do that. And let's do differences too. Differences, so average uh, speed is uh, distance divided by time, whereas, whereas uh, instantaneous speed speed is the rate of change of dis distance. Uh, or the gradient of a distance versus time graph. It helps having a real uh, fun time at spelling currently. There we go. Okay, so that will be our kind of our key difference between them there. Another thing we might want to add in here is that instantaneous speed applies at a specific moment of time, and the uh, where, and the average speed applies over a period of time. So we could add that there, but um, I think we've talked about that enough in this video. So we've got a distance versus time graph here, and we've got um, a point marked. Um, so the time is six seconds, and it's traveled 12 meters at that point. Um, so we're going to try and work out our two types of speed at six seconds. Um, but first of all, we're going to describe how the speed changes over time. So the gradient gets steeper over time, which means the speed is increasing. And just to repeat, if I just write speed, that's abbreviation for instantaneous speed. Okay, so we wanna calculate the average speed at six seconds. So um, average speed is fairly simple. We would just do distance divided by time. So it's traveled 12 meters in six seconds. So it's got an average speed of two meters per second. If we want to know the instantaneous speed at six seconds, we you can see we need to draw a tangent to the graph at six seconds, which is what this dashed line is. And we would need a, another point on that tangent, which is what we've got down here. So we need the gradient of our tangent, which we're just gonna do change in y over change in x. The change in y would be 12 minus three, because we always do the one furthest to the right minus the one furthest to the left. And we are gonna do six minus five, and that's gonna be nine over one, which means it's nine meters per second there. So it's got um, quite a bit faster towards the end. Comment whether your answers to the two speeds makes sense. 
Uh, well, yeah, so if you think about it, it spent the whole time in here being at a speed less than nine meters per second. So it makes sense that the average, um, all the speeds before uh, six seconds were less than nine meters per second. So it makes sense the average speed is less than the instantaneous. Speed. So that does make sense there. Okay, so um, as I have been in this video series, let's finish off by looking at the notes that I would have made on this video and the cues that I've given myself to prompt remembering this in the future, because you're going to see these uh, cues pop up in the next videos that I'm going to make. So we've got what our average speed is and our instantaneous speed is. And the other thing I've got in here is when those two are the same thing. So most of the time they're not the same thing, but there is one instance they are the same thing. Um, so we can see that our average speed, so there's our symbol for average speed, is the distance divided by time. So that's why those uh, letters are there. They give us the right keywords. Our speed, so this shows us that's telling us the instantaneous speed is the rate of change of distance or the gradient of a distance versus time graph. And finally, ask when does the average speed equal the instantaneous speed? Well, it's when the instantaneous speed has been the same the whole time. So I could actually give myself some. give myself some cues to remember it. So it's when the instantaneous speed has been constant there. So you guys add some cues in there for my, me as well. And you'll see these cues pop up at the start of videos where we're looking at speed and things in the future. Okay, so that brings us to an end of looking at um, the average speed and instantaneous speed. And we'll, uh, in the next video, we're gonna look at um, average velocity and um, instantaneous velocity, which you'll notice has a lot of similarities to what we've seen in this video. And then we'll look at what the difference between speed and velocity is in the video after that as well.